We are talking about a very exciting program at UWI. It is the UWI's Sport Management Program. Joining us on set, we have a lecturer in Sports Management and also Sports Management Program Coordinator, among many other things, as well as the Sports Management Program Coordinator. So we have Ms. Sherlyn Cabrales. And just to give you some background information, she's a UWI lecturer on Sports Management. She led the TNT hockey team to gold in 2002 CAC Games and was the captain in the inaugural 2000. 2003 Indoor Hockey World Cup in Germany and she holds an MBA in Sport Management and Business Administration respectively. All right and also joining us we have Sports Management Program Coordinator UWI Miss Calicia Gregoire. Welcome. How are you all doing this morning? We're okay. fine. Thank you. So this is a fairly new program is it? No, no, no. No, it's not a new program. Is it an undergraduate program or graduate program? It's a graduate pro program. It's a graduate program. Yes. How long has it been around? For eight years? Yes. Eight years. Yes. Okay. Eight. It will be about, we we're taking our 10th cohort mm -hmm. this um, semester coming up. Okay, so what are some of the courses that are covered in these programs? We have events management, facilities management, uh, human resource management, finance, law, communication, and management sports management okay and how has the intakes been over the years are people generally responding while they're being attracted to the program yes they are the we have at least 15 to 20 students per cohort, cohort. Yes. Yeah. yes 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 on an um, annual basis yes. yes okay so what would you like to share about this experience why should people uh, attempt to sign up for this particular program what are the benefits the benefits are the exposure to international reach um, the program is the number one it's the FIFA executive program it's the number one sports program in the world technically and it gives you the opportunity to expand your knowledge base to give you the experience on sports management in the field as well and you get the network where you can meet persons from all over regionally and local locally internationally as well and it's basically the benefits is networking, right. putting yourself out there, and basically, um, <laughs> I I just, no, I'll just add to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. is being very modest because <laughs> she she's actually a graduate from the program. Oh, you are? Yes, I am. Yes, okay. yes. Um, the program is tied in with the CIES, which is the International Center for Sports Studies. It's the education arm of FIFA. So there's a network of over 18 countries in the world that offer this program. It's a postgraduate diploma in sports management. Um, what it does is open up the opportunities for students to network with other people in the program in those other 18 countries. Um, the beauty of the program as well is that all the job opportunities that, that FIFA has, the IOC, and different international organizations uh, advertise and, and made available to the alumni through their private Facebook page. So it's not really the program, though it's done locally, it has a lot of international scope. And I think that's a unique feature of this postgraduate diploma in sports management, that we have to start thinking of sport. When, when we have the discussion with our students, they think, oh, well, where, where can we work? There are no many yeah. opportunities in Trinidad. And I would say, sports is not Trinidad. Sports is universal. So you have to think about broadening your horizon, looking for opportunities outside. And this program actually opens the door for that type of opportunity. So you spoke about interactions with 18 other countries. Yes. How is this done practically? Is it that you have students from elsewhere coming in to speak with this particular cohort? How does it work? OK, well. The network, no, students don't come here. What we do, we invite lecturers within the CIS network. They come to Trinidad and we have a public um, lecture yeah. series that we offer three per year. So that is one way of interacting. But they have an intranet system that you have access to, to all the other people within the, the, in the network. That's how it operates. So you could interact with different students through those various countries. Okay, and uh, what about what makes it the number? Because you said it's the number mm -hmm. one sports program in the world. What makes it number one? The accreditation by FIFA and CIS, mm -hmm. basically, and then we have the the same the the local the international reach that it has.
makes it the number one program. All right, so let's talk about actual enrollment into the program. What would be the criteria? Do you need to have a background in sports? What, what would be the criteria? Well, you have two, two ways, that two options. Um, you must have extensive experience in sports or any experience. Extensive. In, yes, <laughs> active, <laughs> extensive and active as well. And uh, any a degree from a particular, any university or acceptable by the University of the West Indies with a lower second class honors. Wow. And so then you have an interview by the international person from CIS, and those three ways you'll be able to get through to the program. So let's talk about the careers that holders of these degrees tend to pursue. Mm -hmm. What would be the range of careers? Well, sports is, is a multidiscipline um, focus study. Um, like we had mentioned before, you do an introduction. It's, it's really like an introduction to the opportunities that might be available to you. So you do sports law. And of course, you'll have to do, at least it introduces you to the law aspect of it. And then you, it's supposed to pique your interest. So that's one area. We do sports marketing. So you have that type of thing. You mm -hmm. could do marketing. And it's not necessarily mean you have to work in a sporting um, entity. You could do sports marketing for, for, for an insurance company that sponsors sporting events. You could do sports marketing for the bank that sports uh, that sponsors sporting events as well. So it all depends on the the, the company and and you know wh what are they focused because we also in those companies you will have sports days. So it really adds to how we're going to deliver at, at a high level. You also we also do human resource management and again in in all businesses you you have different activity to get people involved. And sometimes it's, a lot of them have a sports platform. Um, we also have um, sports communication. So we're in media mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, you know, radio, TV, or every different discipline in the media will have a sports section as well. So, so you see, it's really a, a foundation and a platform to build from, to pique your interest. And then, so the opportunities are wide and ranging in different areas. How would you say an athlete would benefit from a program like this, like, say, J. Hugh Gordon or, or somebody? You know, he's a, um, a graduate from... He is. Yes, no, he's, I, I he's not, not a direct <laughs> graduate from... or a postgraduate, but he's actually a graduate from an <laughs> undergrad right. program okay. at UWE, and he was first-class honors. So he did very, very well. And again, it gave him the different tools to be able to market himself, mm -hmm. to be able to see opportunities beyond just being an athlete on the pitch. Um, it is important to, to highlight that sports management is a business degree. Yeah? It's, a, it's interesting because he just launched his line of fragrances oh, yes, as yes. well. So this would have definitely helped him definitely. in terms of providing so skills. He has all the attributes wow. as far as marketing himself, mm -hmm. maybe having a basic knowledge of, of, of the law part of it, managing people, mm -hmm. um, facility management, events management. I mean, he has um, a nice foundation to build on. And, um, and, and for sports athletes, I, I always try to encourage them to at least take a couple of classes to at least get the basic knowledge of managing yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have a manager, but you have to mind your business. And, and that's important. So just, just coming in and, and getting that basic knowledge is very important. And Ms. Gregor, uh, could you tell us how this benefited you personally, you being a graduate, how has this impacted your life? Well, it opened me up for new opportunities. Um, with the program, it exposed me to different things in terms of the theoretical background of doing sports events, as opposed to just seeing it on TV, you get an understanding of what takes place behind the scenes. Um, with the program, I was also, ex the opportunity that I was afforded in terms of putting myself out there, events management, because I also have a background in events management. And I got the opportunity to work at Beach Soccer for Kai De Kwai, um, the Tobago Beach Annual, Beach Soccer Championship annually. And I was the events coordinator for the, the tournament. With that, I'm also assisting Kai De Kwai, De Kwai Edge. So it's it, the networking part of it. Yes. You get to meet people and then you place yourself in those positions where you can actually apply this knowledge that you gained with World of Dance, Chain in the Sun, different sporting act activities. So it was a great opportunity in terms of levering, putting myself out there. And then here I am actually coordinating the program, the same program that I did 
how many years ago. Yes, so excellent. it was a great opportunity and it pushes, put you in front basically to see how many things you can apply and to also continue studying and seeing the, the background of the business side of sports. All right, and our final 20 seconds, Ms. Cabrales, closing comments. What would you like to say to those looking on who may be thinking about this program? Oh my gosh, it's a great opportunity. It's actually developed in a way that caters to the working adult. It's a blended learning program, mm -hmm. which means that there's 10% face-to-face. So the first mm -hmm. week in each semester, we meet, you meet with your lecturer and you get a feel for the program and then you go online. So, and, and it's delivered online, asynchronous and also synchronous as well. Um, it's, and what that does is actually, you could be anywhere in the world and actually attend your class. Yes. You're, okay. you're able to upload all your assignments, you, you interact with your fellow classmates, and that is the key and the main selling point in this Definitely. program it, it sounds is extremely amazing. flexible Thank for you. the adult learner. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ms. Sherlyn Cabrales and Ms. Calicia Gregoire. You